Hello everyone, today I'm finally getting on with starting to lay out for the new polytunnel. Um, the new polytunnel is replacing an old one, I had one 20 foot by 10 foot and that was one of the old blow away ones, very cheap ones. Now first tunnels are very kindly donated a tunnel to me, I've got that completely free of charge so I'll say that up front. I couldn't be happier and I'm absolutely stoked about it to be honest. And I wanted to take you through the process of putting a polytunnel up and the considerations therein and some of the things that I've learned along the way. I'm in another one of my tunnels here. Uh, I've put quite a few up now and you do learn, tend to learn things along the way that help you enable that. Now, with the first tunnels thing, you get this little lucky bag in there. You get a manual for putting the instructions for putting it up you get a couple of books grow food in your polytunnel and grow all year round polytunnel handbook that's brilliant i haven't even looked at them yet but i will do you get a year in the polytunnel planner so a kind of a month by month thing and these this stuff these books and that planner this other thing in here polytunnel growing guide shows you when to sow, plant and grow and harvest and a crop wheel. All this stuff is helpful for those people who are brand new to growing undercover because it is a different methodology than you're used to for growing outside. Also in here you get this which I love. You get first off you get a little packet of tomato seeds so again great for the new grower and you get this, this is important, this is a tea bag. And rather than it being a gesture just to go with that, it's a little bit more than that because the idea is you make the cup of tea and you sit down and you read this manual through. That's more important than it makes out to be because, and that's why I'm in this tunnel now, when you read through the instructions, you'll, you'll come to part that says, use this clamp, to fix this pole to that pole, that sort of a thing. And you'd be thinking, okay, that's fine, I can follow that. But the important thing is, it goes in stages with the tunnel. And to my mind, first of all, it's preparing your ground, getting that level. Next thing you've got to do is set your foundation tubes. That's what your tunnel is set on. They need digging into the ground and setting up all nice and square. And we'll go through all this. Then you need to set your hoops. Now these hoops come in sections and you need to fix them so this hoop joins up up here and then it's got a self-tapping screw in there this is important because before you put the hoops onto your foundation tubes they need to be fixed otherwise it's like wrestling an octopus they'll be all over the place so once you've got your hoops together it's difficult then to fit these clips now this is a cube clip here this goes around this and it fits this crop bar and it's the same on the tunnel that I'm coming to fit. There are other clips here again this is a different manufacturer but this is a saddle clamp and this needs to be fitted to this hoop before it's all fitted together and screwed up elsewise you won't get them on. So the idea with the cup of tea is to sit down and mark and note how many clips each hoop will need and what they are and where about they go. Again, over in this corner here, we've got this diagonal bracing bar and a tunnel I'm going to be putting up has got these as well. But there's a Q-clip up here and a Q-clip down there to fit it. So you need to read through the instructions for each part of the construction that you're doing and work out how many clips you do it. And this is how I do it. And I haven't done it yet, I'll do this tonight on this. On the very front of this is a nice diagram of the tunnel itself. And it shows, for instance, these diagonal brace bars. It shows how my tunnel will look when it goes up. And all I'm gonna to do tonight is read through the instructions. And as it says, fit a Q clip here, I will write on this diagram here, Q. And if it says fit a P clip, I'll write P. So then later on, when I come to put this hoop together, ready to go onto the tunnel, I could say, right, it needs two P's and four Q's. Fit them on, fit the tube together, and bolt it up 
put the self-tapping screws in to hold it together then that hoop is complete and all it has to do is go on then your next hoop can go on and remember that every single one of these hoops in this tunnel will be slightly different will have a slightly different amount of clips that's why it's important to sit down with that cup of tea and read this manual then you can get ahead of yourself and understand and read all the way through it don't go just through the main construction also go through the fitting of the door frames and any other of the optional extras that you've taken up and note down the clips and where they go because believe you me and i've been in this position before where i've had to take a hoop apart and add clips or move them so if you know beforehand exactly where they go if it's a q clip here you can write q if it's two foot this way and the other side of a fixing that's already there you know to put it the other side so getting the spacing and position of these clips is right they can stay loose on the, the hoop until you're ready to fix them to whatever else they need to be fixed to but getting that right is crucial hence the cup of tea right let's go and lay out this tunnel so this is where the tunnel's going it's going to go 20 foot front to back and then 10 foot side to side across this prepared area and this bed this area has been roughly level it's been dug over and raked down so that it's roughly level front to back it's a little bit of variance but not too great and these foundation tubes will take up the rest of that slack to get it all nice and square and level now all i've done this morning is i put a string line you can see it here going front to back along here just so i've got a straight line to start with and I've put these posts in, these are actually the foundation tubes, a five foot spacings, which is what's needed for this tunnel. And they're only stuck in the ground loosely. They're only in about two or three inches because I'm going to take them out. These are just to give the position of where each post is going to be. Then I've got to dig a hole out and put an anchor plate on the bottom. And you'll see all that as we go along and set it lower in the ground. Much of these tubes will be underground with a, a square plate about this big fixed to the bottom of these and that stops the wind lifting it and gives the, the overall tunnel some overall rigidity and strength. So I've laid out this edge and what I need to do now is transpose that across to the other side and there's a way of doing that which I'll show you just now so that you don't get them all off centre. It would be easy to measure across 10 foot and put a post in and then mark out my next row of foundation tubes but rather than it being square like that it could be slightly off like that and you won't notice it necessarily it wouldn't make a great deal of difference but with a, a quick simple measuring then you can alleviate that problem and get everything nice and square right from the start and that helps down the line and gives you a better overall product so the method i use is the 345 method and i've already got this piece of wood set here just laid up against where the tubes are and i've measured three foot along on this side on on your long side measure three foot along on your short side you measure four foot and mark it and then between the two marks you need five foot once you've got five foot you know that piece is square and it's that piece across there that you move inwards or outwards whatever on that end once you've got the five foot you know you've got a nice square corner and you can set your post over there and carry on down the bottom when you get to the bottom you can three four five that corner again to make sure everything's right and then you can measure across the corners but it's only really just to get the rough placement at this stage once we've dug the holes out and we're setting the tubes we'll measure again and be a bit more particular about it to get it exact uh, and then once they're set the rest of it just flies up it's nice and easy so taking your time at this this stage to level your ground get your posts or your foundation tubes set correctly in the ground is vital really and you may as well spend if it takes you an extra two hours it's worth spending that time to do it properly in the first place so let's get on i'll remove this string line now and get this post across uh, and then we can get all the other tubes in 
and go from there. So leaving this straight piece without moving it and just manipulating this long piece until the, the marks I made on these bits of board all match up. I know now that this is now at right angles to that and I can get my next tube in over there a 10 foot along and then I can carry on down there. And I'll three, four, five that corner and put the string line in between the two end posts and get my other posts in and then we can start digging. So I've laid out now these tubes, the, the foundation tubes. They're all five foot uh, apart going up the tunnel way and 10 foot across going that way. And they're rectangular to each other. They're at right angles. So they're not like a trapezoid, they're nice and rectangular. Now the one that's at the highest point, which I think is that one in the middle there, I will set as low in the ground as I can tomorrow when I start digging these in. And then I will draw a level across the tops of all the tubes from that one point, from that one datum point, so that they're all at the same level. So when the tubes go on, it's all going on nice and level onto a square base. Now, I've put some tins across the soil. This is all dug over, remember. Um, and something over the course of, of building this and putting it all together and putting the cover on and all that messing around, you're going to be traipsing backwards and forwards across this soil. So it's one thing I've learned is to put some cover down if you can to stop that compression of the soil. You could dig it over easier afterwards, it wouldn't be too bad, but I've just found it makes life a little bit easier. And if you've got the availability to put something down on the soil to spread the load, then do so. It will help enormously. Um, it will still compress it a little bit, but not as much as a footprint will. And I say that just helps later when you come to dig the beds over ready for use in the spring. So I'll put a few more bits down to cover the whole area, just leaving enough to work on on those areas. And I'll move them about as necessary during the whole build for this. But hopefully tomorrow morning, come back and get these dug into the ground and that's the next stage further on. And we can concentrate then on the hoops. I'll go home tonight and I'll read the manual so that I know what each hoop needs in terms of the clips and where about on that hoop each clip needs to be. So that when I come to assemble the hoops, I can do it literally within an hour. I can just put them out in the car park down there, lay them nice and flat, put the clips on and then bolt the hoops together. So there we go, that's the first part of this done. <laughs>